All right, it's good to get everybody back um, after the bye week. Got good work for the young kids, a little rest for the older guys. Um, our kids, we practiced with everyone on Thursday. Kids had f uh, a, a quick lift and run Friday morning and fall break. And then we were back last night for a, for a really good workout. Um, now we're kind of back on our regular week schedule. So obviously big game this week, tremendous challenge. Um, very talented, well coached, disciplined, tough football team coming in here. I mean, when you watch them play, you realize that, um, you know, there's a reason they've had so much success. The last several years, Coach Kelly's done a fantastic job. They are sound in their schemes and they play with great effort and, they, and they've got talent as well. So it'll be a tremendous challenge. I know they're, they're coming off a disappointment, um, which I'm sure will just continue to fuel their, their fire to get back in the win column. So our guys are excited and, and ready to go to work. Justin, any uh, big takeaways from the young guys' practices? Did, do, can somebody go into that and change your mind about whether they're going to play this year, or is that just more of a development thing this time of year? Yeah, I think it's more long-term investment. Um, sometimes that long-term ends up being short-term, though. You know, you just never know how the season's going to play out. You know, it was good to get, um, you know, some uh, – the first guy that comes to mind is, like, Jalen Jones, you know, a guy who's – been dealing with a little bit of an injury, an injury, but has been um, when he's been healthy, has been working with the ones and rotating in. So it's good to get him in there. You know, Jalen Stroman's another one, kind of in that freshman class that are on the verge of playing a lot, but have been slowed for one reason or another. So uh, it was great to get those guys in there. Panay's another one that you know just you know has moved to the defensive line is is working inside, needed all that work, and he took full advantage of it in terms of, you know, just showing up to to, to really work and, and concentrate on his craft. Justin, I think, I think this will be the third Notre Dame defensive coordinator you faced in four games. Now, you faced him when he was at Cincinnati. But are, are they drastically different than they, than they were under Clark or just – how do you compare them? Yeah, I think they're quite a bit different. Um, you know, I think Marcus Freeman is a fantastic coach with a bright future. Um, you know, they, you know, they gave up a, a couple big plays, missed a tackle or two in the first game, um, and then have played really solid defense ever since. They they mix up their looks. I mean, it's. The foundation is is man man coverage, but they they mix up their looks and move their front, and they do quite a bit. So, um, you know, they provide a tremendous challenge for everyone when you start to think about the diversity of looks you're going to get and the talent of the people you're going to try and try and play against. So, uh, quite a bit different, I would say, than than the last the last guy that was in there. Um, uh, but the results have been similar, very effective. Any update on Silas's status? Nope. Is he good to go or just? I don't know. We'll find out quo. as we go through the week. Um, and in terms of the young guys, uh, you know, that guy, they got the focus. But with four games in, um, some guys now red, uh, the uh, red shirt kind of is back this year. Have you made those decisions? Have you kind of changed anything you've done since last year? You guys kind of got a free pass. I mean, has that? How, how do you kind of approach that now with guys kind of? different group of freshmen now getting to play a couple games or what's kind of the, the how, how are you approaching that I guess well yes it's different than last year I mean last year was a one off um, unique situation you know we, we handle it the same way we handled it two years ago in terms of just having those discussion each discussions each and every week there's a couple guys that you know we think will contribute on special teams that we know we want a red shirt that we'll try and save those games until later on when we need them specific spots. 
due to injuries or, you know, the natural attrition that happens during the season. But, you know, it's something we monitor closely every single week. I have a, you know, like, like I'm sure all the coaches do, have a spreadsheet with participation numbers and, and who's, wh- who's where and who's got a red shirt. You, got really two cl- you have really two classes that have red shirt years now. Right, so um, I guess you could say there's more, more eligible, more guys that are eligible to redshirt because it's two classes in a row. Since the, since the numbers are skewed with the increased scholarships, and then you, got, you know, is, it cha- is that aspect of a change with the two classes kind of having redshirts available? I mean, does anything does it impact anything? Like, are you more able to use guys because you have more people? Or, I mean. I don't think that's changed much. Um, you know, I think most of those guys that were freshmen last year in their emotionally view that as a red shirt year anyway, you know, like even though they have another one. Um, and I think it's good to, especially if you're participating on a normal basis, I think it's good to save that for down the road in case something happens. But um, – no, it's just it's it's pretty similar, I guess. Essentially, you're just dealing with a larger number than it was a couple years ago. Eric, hey, coach, just curious: Have you had discussions with the team, or will you have discussions with them in terms of kind of seizing this moment, trying to trying to find momentum coming off bye week and really setting the tone for the, the second half of the season? Certainly, I mean, we have a um, an awesome opportunity here. We're gonna have a, a sold out crowd and. Um, or I imagine a raucous crowd with an unbelievable opportunity uh, for our football team. So, I mean, the thing that I took away from watching the Cincinnati game with Notre Dame is that it is, uh, you know, every inch, uh, every piece of turf is going to be hard fought for. I mean, it is it's going to be a really difficult um, four yards is a big deal. And... Um, we got to be emotionally prepared for for that that sort of that sort of game. But um, certainly, this is the last of our non-conference games. Then we hit them hit them all in a row, and um, you know, pretty pretty neat uh, unique opportunity for us. At, during during the week zero games, you you mentioned that the players and you guys as a coach were, were watching those games, and there were some teaching moments there. With the bye week, were there any teaching moments for the players? You know that that you found while watching these games this past weekend. Yeah, certainly, and we'll cover them all Friday. Usually, if we have a lot, like we will this week, because we've got two weeks worth, we'll probably hit a few of them on Wednesday of this week. Um, I mean, there were several end of the game scenarios, um, and there was a couple, you know, rules situations that I think are worth bringing up. Um, I don't know. We've got about eight or ten of them. Just logged away that we'll watch with the team. Notre Dame used a couple quarterbacks uh, on Saturday. Is there much difference between those two in terms of what they bring to the offense? Or are they uh, kind of similar in what they bring to the table? Well, I think, you know, this is my opinion. I don't know, you know, what they – their evaluation is obviously more important in terms of what they think. But, you know, 12 is obviously an athletic kid and, um, you know, can, can really run the ball. I see the, the offense changing the most when he's in there. If you will, seventeen and ten, um, you know, seem to be the more proficient passers. That I would say the offense is similar with those two guys in there. Um, so it still adds a challenge. You've got to be ready for everything that you've seen, without spending all day chasing ghosts. So you've you've got to be prepared for whichever direction the game goes, um, and you know whatever guy they choose to roll with, and. Uh, I felt like watch, just watching the game when Pine was in there, I thought they were going to come back and win the game is what I thought. Just they had a little momentum there, and they were they were making some plays offensively. But um, we'll have to be ready for all three. Got to Zoom to Mike Barber. I don't know if you're on mute, Mike, or not, but I can't hear you. Try again, Mike. Yeah, we we don't have you. Tim Thomas, give it a try. I 
This is an awesome way to answer questions. <laughs> All right, Tim, give me a shot. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Well, I mean, it's running the football and executing the proper techniques to give ourselves a chance to have success. You know, in the passing game, we got to continue to find ways to get those guys the ball and be more efficient throwing the ball. Um, you know, that's that's our charge is we've got to find a way to tailor this thing so that our guys have the best chance to to execute and have success. Mike, let's try this again. All right, you have me now? Yep. yep. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Pete. Uh, Tyree, the running back from the Richmond area, number 25. What, what is his skill set? What challenges does he present? Speed. I mean, um, first of all, getting to know Chris and his family through recruiting. I mean, just an awesome, awesome young man, awesome family. But, I mean, the thing that stands out is just he's got elite speed. And... Uh, they really have a dynamic one-two punch with uh, Chris and, and 23. 23 plays incredibly hard, and Chris is um, – he's electric now. When, if he's got a little crease, you know, he can, he can, he can take an eight-yard run and turn it into 80 in the, in the blink of an eye. Was he asking about Chris again? Oh, I don't know. I just, you know, I, I thought both his his parents and his little siblings and and Chris were uh, a pleasure to be around. You know, a lot of fun to interact with and um, serious students. And I just envisioned that their home was, um, while more talented, you know, was similar to the home that I grew up in in terms of making sure they did right and um, did well in school and that sort of stuff. So just uh, I'm obviously want Chris to do well. It, you know, Obviously this weekend we'd like to, to try and find a way to win the game, but I'm a big fan of Chris and his family. Justin, just to piggyback on that, he also presents a challenge in special teams. I forget which team he took the, the kickoff to the house against. What did what do they do schematically, or is it just again his raw speed? Well, they are very good in all phases of this of special teams. I mean, it's obvious they spend time on it. Um, uh, you know, they have length and speed helps you in special teams, um, and they've got that with. You're talking about the core players, the guys covering kicks, the guys blocking for kick returns. And, um, you know, they can, you know, we've taken a lot of pride in our ability to cover kicks as well. And, you know, we faced the number one kick returner in the country a few weeks ago. And, um, you know, we'll have to be up for this challenge. This challenge is the same or greater in terms of, of covering kicks with this this unit that spends time on obviously spends time on fundamentals and and then also has the guys back there that can really kind of take your breath away. All right. Uh, so Coach, you guys have already had a couple of what we would call big games in North Carolina, West Virginia. How valuable is that experience going into this one? Well, that's a good point. Um, I mean, we have, you know, when the schedule came out, we, it was, um, you know, it was, you, know, you, you start about you, you think about opening with North Carolina and you think about going on the road to West Virginia and then you have Notre Dame coming up I mean it's pretty easy to see the three of the first five are are pretty important big big games and um, it's nice to have been through that but but you know the team we're about to play plays in them all the time too so I don't know that it's an advantage it is nice that we've we've lived through it and we've been through it and, and we can know what to expect a little bit. Anybody else? Thank you, Coach. Yep.